Okay, Shobik, uh, we are happy to have you here. So let's hear you talk about riding a dark bubble. Uh, thank you very much <clears throat> for the invitation. Uh, anyway, I hope things will be fine soon. But what I have been talking, I will be talking about today is, uh, is on a series of work that we did uh, within a couple of years uh, from now. And is based on uh, a series of work in collaboration with uh, Ulf Danielson, uh, Giuseppe Di Bitetto, Shuven Dugiri, and Marjorie Shilo, all of whom I met in Uppsala when I was a postdoc in Uppsala. And we are continuing on this. So the papers that I'll be talking on <clears throat> are these papers. Uh, the first one that appeared in 2018, one in 2019, one in 2020, and uh, the follow-ups on this that uh, we have been working on. Uh, on this. Okay. So, and also I will try to connect to some earlier literature on, particularly on holographic cosmology, since many people here probably are interested in holography. So I'll try to talk on this as well. So to begin with, I will start with a, with a backdrop of this work and which you can also consider as some sort of disclaimer. And the statement is that the series of work when you started doing that, and then a healthy debate was going on, on whether uh, from, the, uh, from directly from string theory, it is possible to get a vacuum solution with a beta positive cosmological constraint well approximated by so-called Dicita space time. Uh, that will uh, describe our present universe, whether it is at all possible to do it directly from string theory or we have to think of some, some of in some other way. That was the backdrop and that basically motivates us to study this. Although I should tell that we are not in a position to answer this question directly and so to say with some utmost confidence. However, what we investigated here uh, some old ideas that were there in, in late 90s and so on, and try to understand that in order to, un in order to understand our physical universe, uh, would those be somehow useful in some ways? In particular, we try to talk about uh, brain world models. Uh, by the way, you can hear, uh, hear, hear me, I guess? Yeah, it's very clear, very clear. Okay. So in particular, we considered the age old brain world models, which were developed in late nineties by uh, Randall and Sandram and uh, also uh, some subsequent work on this, a huge amount of literature. We modified it and we tried to investigate whether one can, try, one can embed an effective digital universe on the brain world and by exploiting interesting dynamics of the higher dimensional vector. By higher dimension, I mean at least one dimensional high uh, on which you embed the brain. So should we ask something here? Yes, of course. So are you trying to induce a cosmological constant on the brain world? Yes. Okay. That's what we're saying. Like we want to, want to see some effective digital universe on this brain world. Uh, but for that, we have to modify the brain world a bit. So that, that I will be discussing in this, in this talk. And we will investigate some possible connection to existing some standard holographic techniques and as a result of this program, there will be some interesting byproducts, which will be also interesting by itself. So that, these, are the, these are the things that I will be trying to convey uh, in, this, in this talk. Okay, so let us start with some very early attempts uh, in holography to understand the cosmological evolution of the universe that dates back again, uh, by the same time uh, ADS CFT came in, in the picture. And what people did, the basic idea was the following. So simply use a different boundary time. So take a black hole in ADS, and this, this work dates back against to early 2000 or uh, late 90s uh, by papers by Varlin Day and many other people. So simply take a black hole in ADS and the brain in its radial motion in, the, in, in ADS, in the black hole space time in ADS. And the observer who is sitting on the brain, she finds herself in a Hubble universe and that universe, she kind of gets by fine tuning the bulk brain uh, quantities, for example, bulk cosmological constant, uh, brain tension, etc. And the time on our universe, she identifies with the brain time. So this was the, this was the idea. So let me be more precise. So you take a d plus one dimensional asymptotically ADS space time uh, with this metric, f is the blackening factor. 
and the brain is at a radial position a say r equal to a and which evolves as a function of bulk time now let us think about a new time parameter tau which is a time defined on the brain and choose the parameterization t and a as a function of tau in such a way that the induced matrix on the brain is of if a w form this friedman form so this is the this is the form of the matrix that that you are looking at this is very simple just just uh, we we use the correct parameterization to get a particular solution for t as a function of tau and a as a function of tau now with this what you do you just compute the extrinsic curvature on the brain in terms of these parameterizations a and a as a function of tau and t as a function of tau compute the stress energy local stress energy tensor on the on the shell or brain and simply write down the einstein equation and it turns out for example if you start with an ada schwarzschild black hole in the bulk with the blackening factor a given by this uh, you get this uh, this hubble expansion so you get this uh, yeah, this friedman equation on the brain and now what you can see you can easily locate the terms you can identify the terms for example the first term is the curvature term and the first term and the first term if you put in the left essentially that is the energy density that you have and the second term you can identify in four dimension as you as i as i uh, told that we started with a black hole in a in d plus 1 dimension um so d is for for five dimensional black hole d is basically four so in four four dimensional physical world so this term is something like a radiation contribution on the brain and then you have a cosmological uh, constant contribution and this this cosmological constant is not the original cosmological constant in the 5d uh space time that you started with but this is a cosmological constant that you obtained through a competition between the tension of the brain and the cosmological constant in the bulk and that induces an effective cosmological constant on the brain so this is this is the very rough picture and the d dimensional newton constant is somehow related to the high dimensional five dimensional or d dimensional newton constant by by the, in this way okay so this was the formula was, for the uh, the in, uh, induced cosmological constant the effective cosmological constant yeah, yeah so that uh, so this you mean this gd gd is the induced cosmological constant not gd right? lambda d lambda oh, d cosmological d. constant not the newton's constant okay so the cosmological constant okay uh, this is okay i i will tell you in the uh, this formula in in somewhat a few slides after when i explain problem, no problem if you have it later no problem yes we have we have so we we write down it comes up explicitly Uh, the tension of the brain and the and the bulk uh, quantities. I will come to that. I will I, I will do that in few slides after. And in the, in the uh, dot, in yes, the dot, so, dot is the derivative with respect to tau. Is respect to tau. Dot is the derivative with respect to tau because the time coordinate on the brain is simply tau. There must be an equation for t of tau. Absolutely. So the equation for t of tau is obtained by whenever we put this uh, this parameterization. and want to derive this uh, form then you can already see this parameterization basically constraint gives you a constraint equation okay is this is this what you are asking i mean just writing that i mean just writing the equation for what i feel is that just writing the equation for a is not enough i mean there are two equations now a of there is a equation for a there is a equation for t Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, but but they are related. For example, if I if I I have to choose a very particular parameterization, right? So this, if I if I say, for example, define t as a function of tau and a as a function of tau, and put back in the five-dimensional matrix, the constraint that the induced matrix is of this form already gives you a constraint equation on t of tau, a, a, a derivative equation. Can... Yes. So, Shobhik, I have a. Uh, yes. So here, R is equal to A of tau, right? That is what you yes, mean. Yes, R is the R is A of tau. So yeah. the position of the brain. Yeah. Then they are not independent of T of tau, of course, because you want no, to. No, that's what that's what I was saying. So if you if you take this parameterization and just put back in the bulk matrix, the constraint that the induced matrix has this form, it already gives you an equation. And so, this uh, induced. Uh, so you also get some induced uh, radiation density, right? It's like a dark yes. radiation. Yeah. So you get a radiation density and also some uh, cosmological constant dominated thing. Right. This uh, dark radiation thing. Can you make it also dark matter? I mean, it probably comes from the fact that you are embedding it in some kind of specific black hole, right? So yes. is it in this particular case you always get this 
a to the power minus d like factor yes uh, you, you always get a to the power d uh, kind of factor so if you have some bulk matter on the brain it becomes radiation right but suppose and, if you had embedded this uh, thing not in uh, this particular black hole metric but some other black hole metric would yes. you have got dark matter instead of dark radiation some people talks about these things in in early literatures in cosmo in holographic cosmology so essentially they have they consider also well they also go away a little bit from einstein gravity so that also uh, some people claim that that gives some sort of contribution to dark matter as well uh so yeah so but in principle for example if you consider a charged black hole or something so it will not give you a con contribution to dark matter and if you want to induce ordinary matter for example so that i will discuss in the in this talk this is one of the interesting features that i will be discussing about this modified brain world so essentially you can have ordinary matter which 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 redshifts as for example 1 by a cube and but for that this kind of geometry is not sufficient as you as you correctly pointed out so you need to consider different geometry in the bulk okay I will, i will comment on that i will comment on that so how to write down the full thing with also matter and radiation both thanks okay, okay. so this is i just gave example of how, how people talked about this and then uh, another slide i have to uh, talk about what exactly in those holographic studies in literature basically did so they study different kind of scenarios for example this there was an interesting work by berlin and followed by other people so essentially what they consider uh, is a if a possibility of a bouncing universe so for example if the brain is inside the horizon and the brain travels uh, towards the boundary then there is a cut off up to which the brain can travel and again it shrinks back to inside the horizon so this sort of universe uh, one can uh, can try to study in this holographic literature people also study thermodynamics on the brain in different phases particularly in the phase when the brain is crossing the horizon or when the brain is far away from the horizon people also try to understand holographic normalization for this setup because this setup is very interesting in some sense like in the boundary you have a dynamic space time so naturally it will be hard to implement this standard dirichlet condition on the boundary and this using standard techniques in ads safety so people came up with uh, different strategies to understand better the holographic renormalization particularly whenever uh, the brain is near the boundary of the ads and uh, how to renormalize the newton's constant and cosmological constant on the brain universe uh, using these techniques these are the all the studies that were done in literature uh, during that day so now i will introduce another related concept and these two concepts basically will be required for the rest of the talk and this is the concept of uh, the gravity localization on the brain and this was a work uh, by uh, randall and sandram back in 1999 and uh, and also people tried to realize this in ada safety for example steve group said in the in the paper that i referred in uh, again in 1999 and what they did is the following uh, thing they considered ads with a z2 or b4 so you have a you have a you have a brain at z equal to 0 say here you can see my pointer right yes yes okay so you have a brain at z equal to 0 and on both sides of the brain you have ads space time but it has a nice feature uh, that you have this mod of y so y and z coordinate are related by this as you can see towards the towards the right corner of the lower part in the slide so this y and z are related this way so essentially uh you can see there is this mode ensures that uh that there is an effective warping and for by which they secured that in although this extra dimension is kind of infinite in extent this dy runs to infinity uh the warping ensures that you have a finite four dimensional planck mass and they took this kind of setup so so you have a brain world and you have a kind of uh, ads with a z2 or b4 and then they studied what kind of behavior of a linearized four d graviton can have so for that what they did they started with the 5d uh, gravity and uh, did a perturbation on that uh, and then they showed that this effective schrodinger equation you can uh, write down an effective schrodinger equation and the potential has this nice feature so the potential you see have two parts one part is basically this delta z which is the position of the brain this is the position of the brain and then there is the other piece which basically governs the fall off 
and essentially you have a volcano like potential like this so this was the this was the potential uh, that you effective potential that you get in this in this sort of space time particularly with the z2 or before i am stressing it again and again because if eventually we will get rid of this in the generalized construction and then the result was the following the result was if you and try to understand the spectrum of this theory you will see a single normalizable bound state the zero mode and a tower of continuum of kk modes and the four dimensional local theory uh, and if you write down the effective potential on the 4d you will see uh, the potential experienced by a particle will be something like a newtonian potential and then there will be a suppressed uh, uh, kk mode contribution so essentially you have a you have a localized gravity in this space time so that was the con that was the construction by uh, uh, randall and sandram back in to the, uh, 1999 now, what I will be talking about is uh, modifying this construction by Randall and Sandram uh, to a more physical one. So, what, I, what do I mean by physical one is instead of this brain, let us consider something like a spherical brain in the, in the following way. So, as we noted that in the original RS model, there was a Z2 symmetry, a reflection symmetry across the brain. So, essentially, it, it decayed, the potential drops down from both sides. Now, if we think in terms of a bubble, in principle, it will be representing some two insides of a bubble in the sense by inside and outside, I mean like, for example, if you go towards the brain, whether the uh, volume increases or decreases, in that sense, the Randall's syndrome picture where things are like this, this with a Z2 symmetry case, essentially represents the two insides of a bubble somehow glued together. So you have two insides and you glue together using some, uh, some brain in between. However, if I really consider a real bubble nucleating that we'll be talking about uh, soon. So if it's a, it were a real bubble with really one inside and one outside, and also without a condition that the space time is exactly same on both sides, but it could be two different space times with two different cosmological constraints. For example, inside you can have a, a cosmological constant lambda minus, outside you have a cosmological constant lambda plus. So we can generalize this uh, to this sort of picture. And what is the advantage of that? Okay, so first let me talk about the geometry. The geometry is the same. So you have this uh, global area space time uh, with L plus and L minus and the corresponding to the uh, lambda minus and lambda plus. And the lambda minus has low, is smaller than lambda plus. So essentially, you have a, you can think this off as a uh, as a as a small space time inside a big inside a bigger space time. Uh, and and in this local region, somehow you have a less amount of energy, and and the, and essentially a vacuum nucleates uh, in the middle. And eventually, there will be another. Uh, it, it will have a competition with the tension of the wall. And if the whole th whole net energy is negative, then essentially the bubble will expand. So, so we'll call it a true vacuum because it will correspond to a, a lower energy state of the system and in some sense more stable. And inside this false vacuum, which has a higher energy, energy and, uh, and this, this will eventually expand and it will eat up the whole false one. And this, is, this, is, uh, this has been studied by Kuhlman and Delicia in 80s, this kind of situation so eventually you have a you start with a vacuum with lambda plus and then somehow due to the quantum fluctuations of the fields or something a vacuum uh, uh, a bubble is formed with uh, with a lower potential energy and the bubble eventually expands and uh, eats up the full false vacuum and uh, making the things completely unstable so so this was the this was the uh, bubble nucleation essentially so if you want to understand this evil cosmic evolution of the universe, it will be nice to put this Bain world scenario into a more realistic scenario, which goes to this uh, bubble nucleation or something like that. So that's what we will be doing. Now, regarding uh, having the representation of the dark energy, we want the universe with a positive cosmological constant on the bubble world, as we said. And in order to come up with a dissipated universe on the bubble, we again resort to the old holographic intuition where we had no bubble or something, just a, just a ADS and a cutoff on ADS. Uh, although this is a bit different from the normal holographic setup, naturally, because you have two different ADS test times with two different cosmological constants on both sides. 
and therefore additionally to the known understand understood uh, principles you have also have to add some continuity conditions across the across the wall so how to do that we again follow the same steps uh, as uh, one as we should question, yes. one question yes um uh, sorry um, yes. so um like i don't understand why in ads the bubble keeps on expanding because the ads has a confining potential yeah okay so the the point is that essentially you can see the when so this uh, this was the picture that uh, discussed in the brown title poem right like for example in ads you can have so okay so do you want to ask for the kind of real explanation more like from uh, super gravity or really like the energetics no i mean i i'm, I'm just asking a naive question like so uh, a shell this is a junction condition you are using so it's a yes. matter and the matter shell is satisfying standard energy condition matter on the shell is satisfying some standard energy conditions yep so what i am not able to understand is that why the shell will will i mean it may start out expanding but after some expansion it will come back and collapse i and what i am not able to understand is that why it will keep on expanding all the way to infinity. okay so this this will depend on the tension that's what i'm describing now in terms of this uh, junction condition so what exactly will happen to it so this slide and the next one okay yes yes okay okay yeah, okay sorry it's, it's it's a bit hard because i cannot see anyone so it's uh, okay so the so essentially what i we start is basically the brain is at a radial motion at r equal to a of tau and the in the same way that we discussed before this uh, metric on the frw universe is this as you said like this minus g tau square plus a square d omega 3 square however uh, as amita pointed out that uh, in order to have this uh, uh, you have two different metric with two different cosmological constants on both sides of the brain it depend de it demands a non trivial stress energy tensor on it so which is fixed by this israel junction condition and this is given by this uh, uh, square bracket denotes the jump in the extrinsic curvature and the jump in the trace in the extrinsic curvature so if you write down this jump essentially you will see that uh, you can you can evaluate as ab and from after that after some bookkeeping you will try if you want to understand the dynamics of a constant tension uh, brain in this space time so this will be simply governed by the equation that i have written in the in the last uh, equation in the page so the sigma which is the constant tension of the brain will be simply given by this quantity this 1 by l minus something minus 1 by l plus something so now as in answering amtar's question is depends on whether l plus is greater than n minus so that will that will be determining whether you have uh, the brain that is growing or not because you have two different space time on two sides and l plus is not equal to l minus okay and then uh, if if this is true uh, in fact this is true and then oh, what are then uh, you can see you can define something called this uh, constant critical tension is a tension which is uh, which is which is obtained in the limit when this uh, 1 by a is much smaller than the 5d scale 1 by l and then you can see that uh, the critical tension of the brain is simply this and this we call this rs tension this randall syndrome if they had two different cosmological constants on two sides that would be simply the tension that you have and that's the corresponds to the flat randall syndrome case however in order to obtain a positive cosmological constant we have to consider a slightly subcritical tension and the lambda 4 and this is answering shure's question this lambda 4 is simply this uh, the difference between the critical tension and the tension of the brain so essentially what you do you take this equation that i wrote before this equation for the sigma and just expand this thing uh, in um, In in sigma minus sigma c, so the difference between the tension above, uh, below the subcritical tension, and if you expand this, essentially you get back the same uh, Hubble equation. But now you can just read off your g four to be a, with the difference between one uh, by l plus and one by l minus, and this is how it is related to g five. And you can just check that if you have standard and syndrome scenario where you have uh, uh, You, you have uh, same l on both sides uh, essentially it reduces to just the previous relation 1 by l times g5 so this is this is how you can you can realize the effective cosmological constant on the on the brain 
Uh, sorry, Shobhik. So yeah. your sigma is time dependent or is a constant? Yeah. It's a constant. You assume sigma to be a constant. And uh, so you are basically considering a constant tension brain. And then whenever you write down the stress energy tensor, you effectively get this uh, equation for sigma. I mean, the equation on the left hand side of sigma. I see. Okay. So sigma is the intrinsic tension of the main Absolutely. brain. Absolutely. Yes. And, uh, and, but then it can, this lambda four can be of any sign, isn't it? Yes. But if you consider subcritical tension, for example, that I consider, then lambda four has to be positive. Okay. So it depends on tension. So as I said, like for a brain with a subcritical tension, then uh, sigma is essentially less than sigma c. That's the definition of subcritical tension. So critical tension I define like this, when you have a flat uh, brain, so that reduces to the Randall syndrome scenario. Now, if you have a subcritical tension where sigma is less than sigma c, then by definition, lambda 4 becomes positive. Does this answer the question? Yes, thank you. Sorry, I'm asking again and again because I could not, uh, I can, cannot see the pe people's face. So that is the bit uh, bad thing in Zoom. Anyway. Okay, so now let us try to study the linearized gravity on the wall, on the bubble wall. So what we do, we consider just like Randall syndrome, the, the fluctuation of the metric in response to a localized source on the bubble wall. So we consider this fluctuation where A is basically the zeta by or xi by L. And in momentum space, you can write down a traceless perturbation, uh, the equation for the traceless perturbation, and they satisfy the simple equation. And there are papers by Gidding, Scott, Randall, et cetera, who showed like um, for these cases, you can actually compute the propagator uh, when the two, two points are on two sides of the brain. Uh, and we carried this out. And then you can see for these modes, and it is well known that this transfer traceless mode, this graviton propagator has the same qualitative behavior as the scalar propagator in the background with the same source. And essentially at the end of the day to get back to uh, get, bring this indices back, you have to just uh, do, you have to just use some integral, but the basic qualitative uh, feature remains the same. Uh, so this is the Green's function, equation for the Green's function that you, uh, that you have to solve. And then uh, the computational ingredient uh, is as uh, Amita was talking about sometimes back are basically the thin shell junction conditions, which are which basically tell the fields are the same and essentially the derivative of the fields are the same on two sides of this as you as you match this thing across the shell. So if I you, if I want to solve this Green's function equation with this thin shell junction condition and solve for the scalar equation, so essentially what you have to first do, you have to solve for the scalar equation away from the source and then uh, match the solutions in two different regions using the junction condition and that will fix some of the coefficients, arbitrary coefficients of the solutions of the linear combination of solutions on both sides. And then what you use the regularity condition in the interior and, uh, and the holographic notion of normalizable and non-normalizable modes uh, as we use in standard holography to fix the solution completely. So all the coefficients that's how we fix and this is the this is where the holography takes is uh, intrudes in this in this whole thing, and then convoluting with the propagator, uh, the, convoluting the propagator you get with the source, uh, and taking both points on the shell uh, for small energy for low energy, you see this sort of behavior of the field. This chi tilde is the uh, is the momentum space field, and then if you want to read off the G5 and comparing with the standard graviton behavior of the standard graviton propagator, you will see this G4 is simply can be read off as 2L minus minus L plus inverse G5 as we exactly uh, argued from directly from the Hubble situation, the Friedman equation. So it's a consistency check that whatever way you do, also if you use a bit of uh, holography, you essentially end up in getting the same, same G4, same four dimension Newton constant. Okay, and then we uh, went ahead to have some fun and trying to understand whether you can even go ahead a bit and try to understand some features of holography. And then what we did, we started to understand what happens at large distances when uh, A is large. Uh, then whether we can estimate the effective degrees of freedom on the, on the bubble wall. And to that, we used some sort of uh, intuition from holographic denormalization 
So the total renormalized stress tensor is basically some stress tensor, um, some uh, local contribution, this ballast aluminum Krauss tensor plus the counter term contributions and the counter term contributions generally you can write in terms of these two contributions in the leading order, this kappa one and kappa two, and which are which are something like renormalizing the 4D Newton's constant and 4D cosmological constant of the boundary stress energy tensor. And you fix kappa one and kappa two in such a way that as the brain moves all the way to the boundary, essentially the stress tensor remains finite, the renormalized stress tensor remains finite. And that fixes kappa one and kappa two to be this, these two values. So now you would like to understand the total degrees of freedom on the, on the bubble wall. And to, that, to do that, essentially what simply we need to compute is the trace of the stress and neuromalized stress energy tensor, uh, which has this form. This is the wild anomaly, and this has this form. And uh, using the renormalized stress tensor we got, we simply can read off what is the, what is the degree of freedom, effective degree of freedom uh, living on the, on, the, on the brain world. And it turns out to be the difference between cube roots, so, uh, so, uh, these cubes of lambda plus and lambda minus. And lambda plus greater than a lambda minus. Okay. So this was just some fun. Can, and you, then, just go, can yes. you just go back to that slide? Yes. If uh, lambda minus is greater than lambda plus, then n square effective is negative. Yep. What does that um, mean? Or maybe there is a typo. I think I think I made a typo here. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. I think I think I made a typo. Is what plus is it? Some of yeah. the two. Yes. Yeah, so, so the larger is uh, plus and the lower is minus. So it's, it's positive. No, no. I can I flip that. I'm just saying that uh, right hand side is a is a signed object. Yes, yes, of course. No, you are absolutely so, correct. So I think I think you are correct, and uh, it it is positive. So I, I made a typo. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry for that. Yeah, and thanks for pointing out, Shreyas. Okay. Okay. So now answering Oyanda's question, that if you if you had we had radiation, so we, sh we saw that if we have this bulk matter, so we have the radiation short shell black hole, in the boundary you have uh, sorry on the on the shell or on the brain you have a Friedman equation where you have only a radiation contribution. Uh, this, this is what we showed here. So for, for uh, inside and outside, when you have M plus and M minus, you can essentially see that you obtain a Friedman equation with a radiation density given by a difference between this one to this M plus by K plus and M minus by K minus. Uh, that is standard, that is just expanding uh, the previous uh, argument uh, and using here and using the junction condition. The same, same trick only using this uh, bulk matter. Now, uh, now actually answering on this question, like what about matter particles on the universe? Now, so far we know this bulk matter becomes radiation on the bubble wall. And following the Friedman equation, we can kind of intuitively see like if we want to have some, sorry, some contribution uh, which goes as one by a cube rather, so something like a matter density, uh, then we need something uh, which whose mass is goes as r, which increases as r. So what it can be? So one answer is, one intuition is perhaps this will be an extended string or something. And indeed they're kind of, this kind of background like, uh, which is called a string gas background. So it's a, it's the ADS black hole sourced by a cloud of strings. Uh, essentially was found by Shankho Deep Chakraborty in 2011 when I was a PhD student in IOP. And this, uh, this background essentially has a contribution to the string density, which comes exactly in the desired way. So it comes with uh, this alpha by four pi r, and alpha, you can think of some average tension of the cloud of strings. So you have, if individual uh, strings have tension T, N is that number of strings, which are very large for a spherical symmetric distribution, and V3 is the transverse volume. And what we do, we do the same old game. We ex exactly uh, have these two sides of the, of the brain with two different uh, backgrounds, with two different uh, cosmological constants, two different masses, and two different uh, density of strings, I think there is another typo, it will be alpha plus minus. Uh, then we end up with an Hubble equation where you have this uh, radiation contribution, which is proportional to a difference in masses. 
and you have a method contribution which is a proportional to the difference in the tension of the strings the and and the divided by k plus so this is how you can realize the matter on the on the brain and you can more concretely see this whole thing by resorting to what is known as uh, gauss equation this is the gauss equation of the gauss kodazi where you can relate this five and four dimensional riemann uh, tensors uh, you, using this this equation and if we use this equation and also use the thin shell junction conditions that we talked about before the continuity of the matrix and the discontinuity of the of the stress tensor so essentially you end up in getting with this sort of uh, uh, four dimensional einstein tensor and you can easily recognize this piece now so you see this piece basically corresponds to p equal to 1/3 rho which corresponds to the radiation density as we as we pointed out in the earlier picture, earlier slide with 1 by a4 kind of behavior and 1 by a cube kind of behavior with p equal to 0 and this is precisely the matter contribution on the shell that we that we kind of uh, also discussed in the previous slide but this is a more concrete way of seeing things and how to understand this uh, in how to get this uh, hubble equation uh, this friedman equation that you wrote down uh, from this einstein tensor is simply to take the tt component of the effective einstein tensor and it yields exactly the same uh, hubble equation uh, in terms of this with the correct newton's constant and uh, cosmological constant so this is this is the kind of fun thing that that we obtained and then essentially you have the full evolution all the all the terms in the in the friedman equation you have cosmological constant you have uh, you have radiation and you have matter with the correct uh, dispersion relation with the correct p rho relation okay now the natural question is can you consider the back reaction on the bulk so is this possible that you consider what happens like you consider this pooling strings and so on so what happens if uh, what about the back reaction on the on the bulk because of this can you compute the back reacted matrix that is that basically we considered in our in our a third paper in the in 2020 paper so and consider kind of three different scenarios when you have a point mass on the brain at the end point as the end point of the string and another continue another scenario is when the string is pulling from the brain from inside and the string pulling from the brain from outside and to bring it to a flat gauge when the boundary matrix is kind of flat uh, essentially you have to put the corresponding mass in your in your theory that you can kind of see that these two are related by some gate choice and you can also come and to see explicitly what exactly i mean by this thing is the following that if you consider the covariant conservation of stress energy tensor in the bulk you essentially find two distinct contributions if you consider the string to end at some particular zeta naught uh, radially extending and then you ex exactly see the t00 component you can actually decompose into two parts one part is a theta comp theta part which is basically due to the string stretching in the bulk and then you have another term which is basically has a delta function source which is a localized uh, localized contribution on the brain and this is due to the end point of the string and then if you compare this term with this term you will see this is exactly kind of a similar term that that we are kind of considering because here tau is the tension of the string and here alpha prime is the average tension of the string and this is tau by k and alpha prime by k uh, alpha by sorry alpha plus by k and alpha minus by k and this one by a cube is one by a cube so essentially you have this this exact uh, physical thing that is happening uh, you can also cross check from this sort of this sort of argument and this is really the picture then is then it turns out that it, it might be nice to actually uh, get to uh, the exact matrix exact back reactive matrix in this uh, or exact geometry with this back reaction and we worked this out and got some cumbersome uh, back reacted matrix and uh, and this and this geometry i i don't think it's uh, it's necessary to show it here but uh, but actually for this extended string and this point ending on the string uh, so the end point of the string ending on the brain essentially you find you can find this back reactive matrix okay and then i will be collecting some supports from here and there about about this about this construction to uh, to try to convince that uh, why actually we we were thinking about this bubble nucleation and so on so first thing is to connecting to weak gravity conjecture 
And in the weakheaded conjecture in this in this original version, it says like if you have a theory which is coupled to gravity with some u1 gauge symmetry with some gauge coupling g, then uh, there there should exist some particle with uh, mass and charge where mass is less than equal to charge times some constant. Uh, however, if I if one try to promote it to for the higher flux fields and then essentially uh, think in terms of charge and drain or something like that. Then there was a proposal by Oguri and Buffa where they showed that essentially it means that a non supersymmetric ADS vacuum, which is supported by flux, can decay non perturbatively into a stable supersymmetric ADS vacuum. So if you start with a non supersymmetric ADS vacuum, which is supported by flux, so there always exists a decay channel where it not non perturbatively decays into a stable supersymmetric vacuum. This was the work by Oguri Baba and then also similar work done by Freibogel and uh, McClevan. Now, in the, in the language that we used before, like this false vacuum and true vacuum, think about your false vacuum as a non-supersymmetric ADA space time, which is supported by uh, some flux and, the, and true vacuum as some supersymmetric ADA space time. So this, was, this, was, uh, this is how you can interpret it. And then we know about a decay channel like this, which is the brown title poem instanton, uh, which, con which corresponds to this, this charge, uh, this flux is released to a spontaneous nucleation of uh, some charged spherical membranes. And the energy conservation is done in the, exactly the similar way through the balance between the energy density inside and the tension of the membrane, the created membrane outside. And this fixes the critical radius of the instanton. Now in support of this picture, once again, we, can, we also talked about a particular embedding in, in string theory. And where we discussed a known, we considered a known non-supersymmetric vacuum named uh, Roman's vacuum uh, to a supersymmetric ADS-5 process 5. And this Roman's vacuum has a G3 flux. This is H3 and uh, F3. And uh, essentially it, it nucleates, uh, you can show uh, in, it, it nucleates into a, a PQ5 brain and eventually decays into a non-supersymmetric, decays into a supersymmetric vacuum. And this exactly supports our, our claim about having a, a subcritical tension and so on. And in our paper, we have given the, all these uh, numbers that basically establishes indeed you can, you can have some sort of uh, uh, construction directly from at least some supergravity. Okay. And then there are many things that we are kind of trying to discuss uh, in, this, in this program. Uh, among these is basically one is like the hanging strings as we see invoke some sort of non-local connection between uh, in the space time and creating a massive deformation on the bubble wall. Now one can think of a sandwich kind of space time where you have two brains which are connected by, by the strings. Uh, the question is if the, if the brains are very close to each other, is there a possibility of, uh, of formation of a black object or a wormhole connecting the two brain worlds. And another thing that we are studying now is to understand this uh, holographically about the whole picture of this nucleation, uh, nucleation of the bubble and eventual expansion of the bubble. Uh, and there are some work by Jose Barbon and Rabon Vitri and others. So we are, we are currently looking at these things. So th that's, that's in short what we are, we are trying to do in this, in this program. And uh, thank you for your patience. And we hope we come out through some, some traversable wormhole or something. Hi, Shobik. Thanks for your nice talk. So, um, and yeah, it was very good. So let us pause and take questions now. Yep. Sure. Uh, like with all these brain world scenarios, Stability is an issue and many of the parameters are ad hoc. So can you address that issues? Those I mean, issues? Uh, stability of the brain world scenario you are saying or the black yeah, hole? Sta part? Yeah, stability. I mean, gen in general, for instance, uh, what about the tension of your uh, brains? What is the tension? What decides the sign of the tension, for instance? So, okay, so what decides the sign of the tension is basically, so as you said, like you have two different ADS space times inside and outside with different cosmological constants and so on. 
so as you see that this sigma is the difference between sigma and sigma c the critical tension and the original so you okay so you are asking about the tension mm -hmm. okay so the let, let's go back so you can see there is a so there is a competition between two term if you if you want to understand the tension that is this one by l minus and one by l plus mm -hmm. so essentially yeah. you can you can you can draw how this um, how this thing goes i mean yeah so essentially there is a competition between l plus and l minus that decides on the on the tension and uh, one thing i i can tell you in advance is basically uh, for this kind of brain world to be stable uh, you have to assume there is a very less hierarchy between l plus and l minus mm. yeah so the the way you can see this uh, the, the blackboard is very useful in this case then you can switch okay but okay so no, i can you I just can, say it you just say it. yeah so essentially uh, what happens so you can compute the uh, the ratio between say the four dimensional cosmological constant and the four dimensional planck scale and that will be given in terms of the ratio of the five dimensional cosmological constant and five dimensional planck scale now okay. you can you can show that in case the five dimensional uh, five dimensional space time is weakly coupled that will ensure the four dimensions uh, four dimensional brain world to be kind of stable so that is that is the consideration so from from what the formula that i showed in this slide you can actually compute the ratio between the cosmological constant and the planck length in four dimension okay. and you you can see that this is governed by the ratio between that in the 5d so that governs the stability the whether you allow the hierarchy in 5d or not and you can see if you don't have allow the hierarchy in the 5d between the uh, cosmological constants on both sides essentially you have a you have a stable um, brain world which is which is stable up to a, up to a hubble time so essentially you can also estimate for example the collision of the bubble so if you have other bubbles that are created in other sides of the edf and eventually fall back on so you can also consider the the collision time and you can show the collision time compared to the hubble time uh, is pretty large so essentially you can kind of very naive estimate of course that depends on the initial condition of the nucleation and so on but for a reasonable initial condition you can show that uh, the light, the collision time is something like 3 by 2 times the age of the universe like right? the hubble time typical hubble time this age inverse i have a slightly different question suppose i have uh, inside of my bubble is a true vacuum and then outside is uh, a false vacuum yep scenario in such a situation what would be the tension of the bulk and uh, we i mean you should be expanding right i mean the yes that bubble should be expanding does that happen yes that the bubble should be expanding that's that's the point i mean the that's always the point the bubble should be expanding eventually and with the tension is always given by the it's, it's a constant tension so you are considering the tension of the bubble wall right mm. right or yeah no no it's like i i cannot i mean there are all these formula i cannot get my head around it so i mean it's like this uh, from what i can see is that you are really playing around with l plus and l minus right yes so the question is suppose i want to have a true vacuum inside the bubble and it should be expanding what is the condition on l plus and l minus uh okay 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 so the only condition between the l plus and l minus is basically l plus has to be greater than l minus that's enough yes that's it okay so sorry yeah yeah that's all okay yeah so i am actually Thanks. confused here shobhi yes. because you had an expression for sigma explicitly in one of in this slide um no the slide yeah yeah, yeah the, the, the slide before this mm -hmm. exactly so here a dot need not be a constant right no, a dot no. is what what it is so uh clearly this difference uh, is um yeah i don't know how to see uh, so is this so you are asking about the time dependence right yeah the time dependence okay. also whether it it all it is always greater than sigma c it is guaranteed by this expression i guess so but no it, yeah no 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 this this is this result doesn't ensure ensure a dissiter vacuum it doesn't ensure a positive uh, anything so it doesn't ensure any constraint on sigma so it doesn't tell whether it is greater than sigma c or less than sigma c 
Okay. So for yes. example, if you have one plus a dot square by a square is a constant, then you can see it's a Hubble universe. It's, it's just like one by L plus plus a constant and something like that. So now if you want to understand the, so then, then you can ask why you have done this, why you have come to the next step and eventually expanded uh, in terms of sigma minus sigma c. The answer is that you want to do that because you want to incorporate the matter fields also. And that you cannot do there. Here, once you expand, then you can say like whether you are considering, here I have considering, considering a brain with a subcritical tension, not before that. Before that, this can be anything. In fact, you can plot how, how this cosmological constant changes as a function of tension and so on. Okay, so there's another related question then. So you had this alpha plus and alpha minus and M plus and M minus. So, yeah. uh, so it's not quite obvious that uh, what should be the signs there, right? Because okay. uh, you have to somehow engineer oh. the signs and- No, the signs, okay. The, the signs are again related to this expansion. For example, this determines the energy of the bubble, right? So for example, this M plus and M minus, the bubble will not expand for any arbitrary uh, you know, like hierarchy between M plus and M minus. So that the bubble will expand will determine whether M plus will be greater than M minus or something. And same is for alpha prime. Okay, so you are simply called, you are just saying that if, if the bubble is expanding, then there has to be positive energy density. Yes, yes, yes of course, otherwise it, it will not expand. For, for both the radiation and the dark yes. matter, yes. dark radiation and dark matter. Yeah. Okay, uh, so one more question is then, um, usually what happens is uh, in this inflationary scenarios you have, you also consider uh, this so-called stochastic inflation in the sense that there, uh, the, um, the, there can be fluctuations of the brain position. It's not really yeah. following a... So right. if you do that, uh, how does the thing uh, behave? Because uh, it looks like a very interesting problem because yeah, uh, this is crucial to understand whether there will be eternal inflation or not, or you know, Absolutely. like this is this is this is a very important problem, and also this is a very interesting problem. But for that, there are many other considerations as well. For example, uh, if you really want to want to have this inflationary inflationary regime, and you want to really try to understand this inflation, it's also not sufficient to consider only dynamics of a single bubble. So for example, if you have a, if you, so in our case, we are considering as if, for example, this is the first bubble that nucleates, right? And like uh, what Suresh was asking or the related question that I answered is basically about the overall stability of this system. Uh, that requires that this is the first bubble. Otherwise this analysis is a bit complicated, but think of the situation. There are also kind of numerous bubble that can be, that can be nucleated, right? So the inflationary scenario will also crucially depend on that. What kind of initial condition you are choosing on your initial bubble. Uh, and also, for example, about the dynamics of the collision. Otherwise you cannot answer it. So we are not in a position to answer it. You understand the a real phenomenology in your setup. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to understand that. For example, we're trying to understand what kind of initial condition, for example, you have to put in the, uh, in, in your bubble world. So for example, where you, the, so suppose this bubble is nucleating, where it is nucleating. So it might so happen that the false vacuum that we are really thinking about is not really a false completely. It's the second bubble that nucleates. So from the perspective of the second bubble it nucleates, the first bubble already exists, right? So you are saying that you cannot simply write down a simple effective theory of new inflation or something in your no, 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 not on the, from this, from the perspective of a single bubble. Not with a single bubble. You have to understand the whole in, initial condition business for, for this, uh, to understand the in, inflation. Okay. Any more questions for Shobhik? Uh, hello, this is Yuno. And, uh, hi, hi, hi. Sorry, I missed the earlier part of, of your talk. I, yeah. I mean, so what's the major difference between the other brain world models or uh, connection with the yeah, other kind of traditional brain worlds? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there are, there are one prime difference is basically, as I, I think that I mentioned in the initial slides, that instead of the two, in, so if you consider the original, maybe I can go back in the, in my slides. 
uh, if you consider the original brain wall models, you can see this, this is a Z, Z2 RB fold, right? Like kind of an inside yeah, end. Yeah. You can think this of as an inside of a bubble and outside of a bubble in the sense that whether the volume increases as, as, as you move towards the bubble wall or not. Uh, depending on that, you have an inside of the bubble and outside of the bubble. That is not the case for us. In, in our case, we have a, a real bubble, which have an inside and which has an outside. And the evolution of the bubble depends on the uh, relative sign as we were discussing and uh, relative magnitude of uh, L plus L minus and also M plus M minus and alpha plus alpha minus, which are the densities of strings and also the masses of the, of the, I see, I see. Of the bulk black hole. So in that sense, it is different. Um, yeah, and a kind of a minor difference is basically you also are able to get to the matter contribution that I think initially Oanda was asking. Uh, so that, that also nobody thought about. Uh, but there are also kind of very interesting difference in the, in more from the holographic perspective. You can think now the localization of the gravity on the brain world is also a bit different. Uh, differently formulated than it was in the original RS because you see you have a string that is stretching across this brain world geometry all through. So uh, so it's 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 quite different from the from the normal RS which which were kind of rather simple. You can just have a cosmological constant in the on the on the brain as in the bulk and nothing else. And you have the Z2 symmetry that basically saves you from everything because the way RS got this uh, finite uh, G4 on the, on, the, on the brain world was based on the fact that the space time was nicely worked. That is not the case for us. I mean, the whole thing, the RS, RS did a kind of a knife calls plane reduction and essentially get to the fine, uh, this zero mode, which was kind of on the, on the brain, the graviton mode on the brain. Uh, that was not the case here because uh, we didn't have this warping. So the RS, this this mod Y was very, very crucial, which we didn't have. So what we did in our case, uh, in difference, we had completely general space time, global space time inside and outside. We had no warping or anything. So we didn't uh, artificially prepare anything. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, also, you have string guys on the both sides. The, I mean, yes, yes, yes. I see, I see. Hmm. But, but the special part is always a sphere or how to say? Uh, Sorry, I mean, you are asking that whether, whether it's always spherical or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, what, the answer or is always, that, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the expectation from somehow from the surface tension uh, argument, but uh, well, I would say from the from the vacuum decay argument of Brown Tidal Boom or something, they just stated that you expect it to be spherical, and uh, we the, I don't think, I mean this is only expectation. I don't think this is uh, hard and fast way it can be proved or something. That this is the only decay channel that gives you a spherical brain. So in principle, you can also have something else, but uh, at least this brain, decay channel exists. Oh, yeah. I but the bright brown tidal volume cal cal calculation, if you go through, so they basically assumed it in some sense, like is, as a natural selection that you have only a spherical brain in your uh, that nucleates. But uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Very but but nice. actually, I can That's say this yeah. decay channel exists. This decay channel exists. Yeah, but yeah, it yeah. doesn't mean that other decay channels do not exist. It can have, but uh, this is the simplest one. Okay, okay. Thank you for the nice talk. Yeah. Yeah, Shobhik, thanks again for the nice talk. So, okay. thank you. Uh...